welcome to the stage, Dr. Hyunjin Park, co-founder and CEO of Catalog. What an amazing event. Uh, I can't believe I'm on the same stage as uh, Dr. Carl, um, Sean Carroll, one of my personal heroes. Now, he showed us a picture from the Hubble telescope of all of the stars in the observable universe. Now, did you know that each year, humanity generates 100 zettabytes of data, which is about 10 times the number of bytes as there are stars in the observable universe? Now, because of all those bites and of all, all the other things that are happening in the world, energy is the topic of the day in the computing industry. A third of all of the nuclear power plants in the US are in talks with tech companies to power their data centers. And the amount of energy that AI is consuming doubles every 100 days. So pretty soon, all of the energy that's generated in the world will have to feed into powering AI. Now, of course, that won't happen. And the talks between the tech companies and nuclear power plants aren't going to increase the total supply of energy. So we need new solutions, not just optimizations of existing technology, but entirely new paradigms for computing. And so we looked at what it is about traditional computing that's so energy intensive. And for certain things like searching, it's the energy of moving the bits from your storage medium to your memory and then to your processor that takes the bulk of the energy. It's not even the processor that processes those bits, but the movement of bits from the storage to the memory to the processor that takes that energy. And so you have at the top things like tape libraries and then hard drives. And even if you have things in memory already, just moving that to the processor takes as much energy, even more, than it would if you had your data in DNA for computing on, that, on those things. And so we're focusing as a company on this new platform, new medium, DNA, which really isn't very new at all. Uh, nature has been using it for billions of years for data storage and computation, but we're using it for digital data, and we're using synthetic DNA molecules to store the data and to compute on it directly in the molecular form. And so when we do that, uh, we don't have to move the bits from storage to memory to processor because DNA is simultaneously the storage and the memory and processor. So you're bringing the compute to this, the data, and the uh, when we do computations on it, like inferencing, each of those steps are about 100,000 times cheaper in energy consumption than conventional systems. So what we're building is an end-to-end -end system where customers can interact with us through a web user interface. In the back end, we would be encoding digital information into DNA molecules, writing them into the physical structure of those molecules, computing on them, retrieving them, or preserving them, and then decoding it as it's requested by the customers. So as a technological process, we've been around since 2016. And this huge machine that you see on the left side is the first generation prototype writer that we've built. It's an inkjet printer that uses DNA molecules, DNA oligonucleotides, as ink. It prints them on a surface of uh, this plastic film that you see here. And then you overprint those DNA molecules with a droplet of enzymes to attach them together into a longer string of DNA. And that's what contains the digital information that you've encoded into DNA. And in the end here, you collect it all off of this pooler and concentrate it down for storage and computation. Now, we've taken everything that we've learned in this prototype and are building the next generation machine that will be complete in the first quarter of next year. You can see that it's uh, much smaller, but it's also much faster and cheaper to build. And we're calling it uh, the algebra. 
uh, you can see that in, in perspective here. It will be about two and a half meters on one side and 1.75 meters on, on another. And we're looking to bring the first units of these actually to Abu Dhabi uh, to our partners in computational sciences. And so this will be the first in the world, uh, first region in the world to be able to experience these machines. And all of that is coming in 2025. Thank you. That's all I have for today.